Monster! Monster! <laughs> Charlie is a bright purple engine on the Isle of Sodor. He loves to tell jokes, but can also be very serious, especially when he senses danger. One day, Charlie noticed the tunnel on fire. Fire! Fire! Oh no! I must get help! I know! The search and rescue team! I can ask them! And Charlie rushed off to find them. <laughs> Bell and Flynn! I need your help! There's a tunnel on fire! We need to put it out! This isn't one of your practical jokes again, is it Charlie? Asked Flynn. No, 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 there's a real fire! All right then, let's go, Belle! And the three engines headed quickly for the tunnel. However, when they arrived, there was no fire. Huh? said a very confused Charlie. I'm sure the tunnel was on fire earlier. Flynn was angry. Charlie, the search and rescue center is always really busy. We don't have time for your jokes. Only call us when there's an actual emergency. Charlie was embarrassed and slowly backed away. The next morning, Charlie was busy at work and he was about to pass the tunnel again. <laughs> Fire! Fire! The tunnel is on fire! I must get help! And once again, Charlie rushed to the search and rescue centre. Fire! Fire! Fire at the tunnel again! Charlie, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. But there's really a fire! We are not falling for that trick again, Charlie. Now go and do some actual work. Charlie was upset. Who else can I ask to put out the fire? He thought to himself. Then, an idea flew into his funnel. I know! I can ask Fireman Sam! And Charlie rushed off to Pontypac. Fireman Sam! I need your help! There's a tunnel on fire over there! We need to put it out! Oh no, that's not good! exclaimed Fireman Sam. We better go right away. But this isn't one of your jokes again, is it, Charlie? No, no, no! No, there's a real fire and we must put it out. All right then, let's go. However, when they arrived, there was no fire. Huh? said a very confused Charlie. I'm sure the tunnel was on fire earlier. Fireman Sam was angry. Charlie, this is not a funny joke. But there was a fire here. I, I don't understand. The next day, Charlie was at the tunnel, just watching it. Why did the fire keep starting and stopping? Then suddenly, smoke came out of the tunnel. That's odd, Charlie thought. But then he heard a train coming towards him. It was Thomas, and he was heading straight for the tunnel. Oh no, exclaimed Charlie. Stop, Thomas! The tunnel's dangerous! Luckily, Thomas stopped just in time. What's the matter, Charlie? he asked. This tunnel keeps catching fire, and I don't know why. Oh, it's probably your wild imagination, Charlie. I'm sure it's fine. Ah! Monster! Monster! 
Dragon! Dragon! Bell and Flynn heard the shouting and rushed towards the tunnel. Ready, Bell? Flynn asked. Let's soak this dragon out. Belle lined up her hoses and blasted water into the tunnel. I'll check to see if it flew away, said Belle, and slowly entered the tunnel. It's gone, she announced happily. All the engines were relieved. Flynn had an apology to make. I'm sorry for not believing you, Charlie. We should have taken a look in the tunnel before assuming it was one of your jokes. Don't worry, Flynn. As long as the dragon is now gone and the island is safe again. That's all that matters. Burger, please. Hello? Oof. Oh. What? What? Oh. <laughs> Hello. What can I get you? A burger, please. Okay. One burger. One burger. Okay. Oh. Uh oh. No burgers! Oh no, oh no, oh no! What are we going to do? Hmm... Aha! Hello? Thomas! Thomas! We need burgers! Now! Okay, okay. I'll get you some. See you soon. Ah, thanks Thomas. Come on, one burger! Oh, uh, it's gonna be a while. Stall him. What? Okay, um, so, how are you? I've got to get these burgers to the minions. Burgers? Minions? Oh, this could be fun. <laughs> Come on, where is my burger? Oh, uh, almost ready. But first, uh, watch me do a handstand. Huh. Oof! Ta da! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Thomas had to stop at a junction. Come on, come on. <laughs> this is my chance. He replaced the burgers with smelly fish. And Thomas didn't notice. <laughs> Come on! Where's my burger? Um, look, I can count to one hundred. One, oh, come two, on. three, no. four. Come on, Thomas, where are you? Here are your burgers. Hooray! Thomas, this is fish. Fish? But that's impossible. <laughs> Enjoying your fish? Ugh, where are my burgers? Now why should I tell you that? Wait there. Where are my burgers? Ow! 
Okay, okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> Good. 98, 99, 100. Finally, is my burger ready yet? Uh, one second, please. Uh, look, I can count to 100 backwards. 100, 99, 98, 97. There it is. Quick, quick, got to make these burgers. to make these burgers. Phew! Ah. Woohoo! Five, four, three, two, one. There. My burger must be ready by now. Um, who wants a burger? Huh? Wahey! So everyone got their burger. Phew! Good job no one asked for fries. Run out of them too. But uh, what? Minions! Where are my fries? Oh! Thomas didn't mind pulling trucks. He had a good relationship with them, really. But one day, his luck ran out. He picked up his usual cargo. But then, he ran into Salty. Ah, Thomas, I see you have some spare trucks. Please, could you pick up some cargo for me? Of course. What is it? It's fish. The trucks did not like this at all. Fish? We'll smell for weeks. No, thank you. Oh, come on, guys. We're helping Salty out. Thanks, Thomas. So Thomas and his trucks headed over to pick up Salty's fish. But the trucks were still complaining. No! Don't do it! They stink! Pah! Ew! Gross! Yuck! No way! So they started pushing Thomas. They pushed and pushed and pushed until they broke Thomas's brakes. Thomas couldn't stop. Help! Help! I can't stop! Help! Oh no! Thomas is in trouble! I must do something! Percy bravely stood in Thomas's way to try and slow him down, but then he realised something. Oh no, I'm wearing my old wheels. There's no way I can slow Thomas down. But it was too late. He couldn't slow Thomas down at all. And then disaster struck. Oh dear. Thomas still couldn't stop. He then sped past Toby. Oh no, Thomas is in trouble. He sprang into action. Help! Help! That should slow him down. Toby had constructed a wall of cargo. But Thomas smashed straight through it.
Oh dear. Nobody could stop Thomas. <laughs> oh look, there's Thomas. Help, I can't stop. Uh-oh. Hmm. Ha-ha! Hooray! Phew! Finally! Thanks, guys. The trucks tried pushing Thomas again, but the stop and go was very strong, so they went nowhere. The minions fixed Thomas's brakes. Percy was put back on the track, and Toby's cargo was tidied up. And as for the fish, well, Thomas picked it up, but he only took three trucks. Three trucks couldn't overpower him. Ew. Yeah. Thomas was travelling on his favourite line to the beach when... Ouch! Where had the track on the bridge gone? Luckily, Percy came by. Are you alright, Thomas? said Percy. Yes, said Thomas, but can you get some help, Percy? Percy steamed off. Ah, Tom lost the prank engine. I don't suppose you had anything to do with that, did you? Chomper arrived. I'll soon have you out, Thomas, said Chomper, and he got to work. Thanks, said Thomas, and they both left. Later on, Thomas was at the docks. He stopped to say hello to Cranky and a grumpy bull strode the barge. I must go, said Thomas, and off he went. Oh no, said Thomas, I don't believe it, twice in one day. <laughs> Luckily, Percy had been following Thomas. I'll go for help again, said Percy. Chomper arrived. Oh dear, Thomas, said Chomper. Maybe I should follow you, as you keep getting into trouble. Chomper started the rescue. All fixed, said Chomper. Thank you, said Thomas. I'll try and keep out of trouble now. And he left. Chomper left and the docks returned to normal. Percy was worried about Thomas. I'm going to follow you Thomas just in case you get into any more trouble. And they left. Thomas was faster than Percy and soon left Percy behind. Percy 
Percy met James. Have you seen Thomas? said Percy to James. Yes, he came by a few minutes ago. Oh good, I'm on the right track then, said Percy, and he left. Thomas stopped at Maithwaite Station. Thomas, said Sir Topham Hatt, I'd like you to test out the new bridge at the busy junction. Uh, no, no sir, I mean, uh, can't someone else do it? Go on Thomas, it won't take you long, said Sir Topham Hatt, and off he went. Percy pulled into Maithwaite. Have you seen Thomas, sir? Yes, said Sir Topham Hatt. He's gone to test the new bridge. Oh no, said Percy, not a bridge. And off he went. Thomas arrived at the bridge and stopped. Well, it looks okay. And he started up the slope, stopping at the top. I'm sure it's okay, he told himself, and he started to cross it. But his weight collapsed the bridge, which crashed down. Oh no, not again. Percy arrived at the bridge from the opposite direction and went straight up and crashed over the top of Thomas. I'm sorry Thomas, said Percy, I didn't see you there. Luckily, Chomper had been following Thomas. Three times in a day now, Thomas, said Chomper. Now that's just careless. Chomper pulled Percy away first and off he steamed. Then he pulled Thomas out. Thanks Chomper, said Thomas for the third time that day. And off he went. With the bridge repaired, Thomas had to test it again. He stopped on the top and looking down, he saw Tom Moss. You! Tom realised he'd been seen and made a run for it. Thomas followed, but Tom had too much of a start. The new bridge was a success, and James, Percy and Thomas all had fun testing it out thoroughly. Tom Moss had escaped yet again, and was thinking of more pranks to play on the other engines. Good morning Tom Moss the prank engine. I see you've been helping out at the zoo. It doesn't sound like you, but well done if you have. He left. Shortly afterwards, Thomas arrived with Annie and Clarabelle. It was a lovely day and Thomas had brought a lot of visitors to the zoo in his carriages. Then there was trouble. A tiger appeared by Thomas. Quick, everyone get in Annie and Clarabelle, he shouted. And they did. Thomas looked at the tiger enclosure. There was a fence missing and the tigers were walking out. Thomas went to warn the zookeepers. But some tigers got in his way. The tiger looked at Thomas, and Thomas looked at the tiger. Eventually, the tiger moved, and Thomas continued. 
then there was even more trouble. Two of the polar bears had found the seals and the penguins. A lion and a leopard were in with the zebras. An alligator had found the polar bear's enclosure. Someone had been removing the fences. <laughs> there was a snake in a bird tree. There was a gorilla on one of the stations. <laughs> there was a snake on top of a building. And a chimpanzee had found a new home on top of a very high rock. <laughs> Thomas left Danny and Clarabelle for a moment and helped get some spare fences for the zookeepers. After a short while, all the enclosures had been fixed and the animals were back in them. All except the chimpanzee. The zookeepers couldn't get it down from the rock. Thomas had an idea. No, no. Absolutely no, said Gordon. Thomas arrived back at the zoo with Gordon on some trucks and brought Gordon around to the chimpanzee. And clever Thomas had brought the, oh the indignity Gordon, who had bananas all over him. Clever Thomas. The chimpanzee saw the bananas and came down. First, I get covered in rubbish. Then, they use me as a monkey trap. Oh, the indignity, said Gordon. The chimpanzee realised that there were actually no bananas to eat and that he could get more food in his enclosure. The plan had worked. Thomas took Gordon away and returned for Annie and Clarabelle. They collected all the visitors who had hidden themselves in the buildings. Everything was now back to normal and no one was hurt luckily. Looks like you got away with it Tom Moss. Although those fences by your tunnel are a bit of a giveaway. Right, the story so far is that Chickaletta has lost her egg that's about to hatch. Thomas and Chase took her to look for it and along the way picked up extra help in the form of some minions, Peppa Pig and Lightning McQueen. But they found out that Tom Moss the prank engine had taken the egg and put it in a giant chocolate egg and now they can't break it open. McQueen was the first to have a new idea. He raced off to Radiator Springs to find Frank. Frank thought it would be fun to break a giant egg and off they went. Chickaletta was in a panic. Frank got ready and... No movement at all. Chase had called Rubble. He hoped Rubble's drill attachment would go through the chocolate. No, that didn't work either. Pepper came over. My brother George 
breaks most things, but I don't think he could break that egg. Sorry. The minions decided to climb up to see if there was an entrance at the top. Yay! Wow! There wasn't, but then there was trouble. Thomas had an idea. He went to find some friends. At the tea shop. Captain America, Hulk and Thor. Can you help Chickaletta please? said Thomas. They agreed and off they went. Captain America, Hulk and Thor. Hey, look! Arr, smash! <laughs> right, said Captain America. My shield will crack this. No. Your turn, Hulk. You need to be really mad, said Captain America. I know. Captain America then Ow! stamped on Hulk's foot. Hulk was now really mad. Still, he couldn't break the egg. Thor tried with his hammer. Nothing. Then it started raining. Let's take shelter a moment, said Chase. They turned around. A bolt of lightning had hit the egg and it had cracked open. They couldn't believe what they saw. The egg was absolutely full of goodies. Chase dived in looking for Chickaletta's egg. He found something in yellow paper. was a little live pet's hedgehog. Chase went back in and found two eggs. Chickaletta couldn't remember having two eggs, but she was delighted. Then one egg hatched followed by the other. Chickaletta now had two chicks. Well, little live pets, golden hatching chicks, but she was delighted. She also had a new hedgehog friend. Everyone else was so full of chocolate, they couldn't move. It turned out that Tom Moss had stashed loads of mashems in the egg. And we'll have to open them in other videos. Thomas then asked Tom 
where he got the Mashems from. Uh-oh. Tom didn't want to answer that one and ran off, followed by Thomas. So all turned out well. Chicoletta had two freshly hatched little live pets hatching chicks and a new friend. So minions, this is the plan. Queen Elsa is visiting the Isle of Sodor for the first time and Sir Topham Hatt has three expensive gems to give her as a present. We are going to kidnap Queen Elsa and steal those jewels. <laughs> the Isle of Sodor was buzzing with excitement. Queen Elsa was visiting for the first time and every single engine wanted to meet her. I heard she's really pretty. I heard she has magical ice powers. Thomas was on his way to the Sodor Palace with Queen Elsa in one of the carriages. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting there with three expensive gems to give her. And so many engines came to watch. There were naughty engines. There were engines that came all the way from Brendan Docks. And some of the engines even dressed up for the occasion. <laughs> Thomas was nearly there when suddenly he crashed into some minions. Yeah, <laughs> smirked Gru. Queen Elsa, this is a kidnapping. <laughs> if you could come with me, please. <laughs> Banana? You won't get away with this, Gru. Now to begin phase two of my plan. <laughs> Diesel 10 picked up the carriages <laughs> to continue the journey. I thought Thomas was picking up Queen Elsa, said Murdoch. Oh well, she's here now anyway, said Arthur excitedly. Music started playing as Diesel 10 rolled up to the front of the Sodor Palace. Introducing Queen Elsa! Hello. She is beautiful. I thought she'd be taller. <laughs> huh? Look, look. Huh? It's snowing. It's snowing. Woohoo! It's snowing because I'm angry. Ha! Oh, nice one, Queen Elsa, said Thomas. Hop in and let's get to Sodor Palace. <laughs> Queen Elsa, these gifts are for you from all of the engines on the Isle of Sodor. Thomas and Queen Elsa were steaming along as fast as Thomas could go. Stop right there! Uh-oh. I'm the real Queen Elsa. Quick, run! Run! Ah! 
Uh-oh. Now take those imposters away. Ow, ow, ouch. It was raining on the island of Sodor, but luckily all of the engines were nice and warm in Tidmouth's sheds. All except one. Tom Moss. Henry, remember when you got so scared of the rain you wouldn't come out of the tunnel? Yes, Thomas, I do. And Sir Topham Hatt built a brick wall so you couldn't get out. Yes, Thomas, I do. Please don't remind me. Tom Moss had heard this and suddenly had a very naughty idea. The next morning, Tom Moss had trapped an engine in the tunnel and built a brick wall so they couldn't get out. Which engine have you trapped, Tom Moss? <laughs> At Tidmouth Sheds, most of the engines had already left. Percy and Thomas wanted to leave together. They soon arrived at the tunnel and noticed it had been bricked up. What's happened here? Thomas asked Percy, but Percy didn't know. Then, both engines noticed something which made their boilers shudder. Look up there, cried Percy. There's steam coming out of the tunnel. That means there's an engine trapped inside. Oh no! I wonder who it is. We can try and work it out. Yes, Thomas, we can look for clues. Well, our first clue is that it must be a steam engine because of the steam coming out, so it can't be a diesel engine. I haven't seen Porter in a while, Thomas. Do you think it could be him? I don't know, Percy. I'll go to the docks to check. And Thomas steamed away. He soon arrived at the docks, but Porter was there. Hello Porter and Salty, it's good to see you here Porter. I thought you were trapped in a tunnel, but now I have no idea who it is. There's an engine trapped in the tunnel? That's not good. I do have another clue for you though Thomas. On my way to the docks this morning, I saw a blue engine go into the tunnel. Thanks Porter, so it's a blue steam engine. Then, Salty had an idea. Oh, I think I've got it, Thomas. It's Belle. She's a blue steam engine. That's right, Salty. Thanks. I'll go to the search and rescue center straight away. And Thomas left the docks. Meanwhile, Percy was still at the tunnel. Who is on the other side of that wall? He thought to himself. Soon, Thomas arrived at the search and rescue center. Hello everyone, oh Belle you're here. I thought you might be stuck in a tunnel. There's an engine stuck in the tunnel? Yes, but all I know is it's a blue steam engine. Well actually Thomas, now that you mention it, I saw a blue engine with a tender go into the tunnel this morning. Thanks Belle, that's our third clue. So it's a blue steam engine with a tender. <gasps> I know who it is. It's Gordon. Meanwhile, Percy pulled into Knapford Station, still wondering who the trapped engine is. Hi, Percy, greeted Emily. Have you seen Gordon anywhere? He's late to pull his express. Oh, no, gasped Percy. I know where he is. He's stuck in a tunnel. But then, just outside Knapford, Thomas appeared with Gordon. Gordon, said a confused Percy. I thought you were trapped in the tunnel. So did I, replied Thomas. But Gordon had just broken down. 
I rescued him. That's why he's late. So if it's not Gordon in the tunnel, who is it? But just then, an angry Sir Topham Hatt appeared next to Percy. Engines. I've received lots of complaints from passengers. Edward never showed up on his branch line this morning. <gasps> a blue steam engine with a tender. It's Edward. Sir, I think he's trapped in a tunnel. Oh no, let's go and rescue him, Thomas. Thomas! Booms at Topham Hat. Uh -oh. I thought it might be you behind this. Release Edward at once. Ah, Edward, nice to have you back. As for you, Thomas, as punishment for your trick, you are to work on Edward's branch line today. And Edward, you can have the rest of the day off. Oh, thank you, sir. And for the rest of the day, Tom Moss worked up and down Edward's branch line. Hey guys, Chris here. Thanks for watching my video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like it and subscribe to Toy Trains for you if you haven't already. Hope to see you soon. Bye!